In this tutorial, we'll learn how to add two separate track to constraints to a camera, so that the camera looks at two different objects alternatively. It gives a very useful result, like this, when we look through the camera view. It switches between two target objects alternatively, and you can program when exactly this switchover should happen. The objects can have motion, or the camera can also be in motion, while focusing at different objects at different times, this technique will always work. So let us start with the base file of this tutorial. Here, we have already added two objects, which we have downloaded from Blender Haven, a nice place for many such models. We also need a camera which will look at these two objects. We don't have a camera in this scene yet. So let us go to the Add menu, and we'll just add a camera. It is added at the default world origin. Let us move it up a little bit. And we'll push it along the X dimension as well. We can directly change it to say 6. And the height can be 4 unit. But our camera is not looking at any particular object, so this camera view is currently just empty. We have to first use a tractor constraint, which will force the camera to look at some object. So go to the constraints tab and add a tractor constraint. In the target object, let us select our clock. The camera will now look at the clock and we can verify it in the camera view. But at some point, we want the camera to switch over to the second object, so ensure that this influence factor is 1. Now minimize this constraint and add another tractor constraint. This time in the target field, we'll select the vase. You can see that the camera immediately switches over to the vase. That's because this second constraint is now taking priority. This influence factor is 1 for both the constraints here. So this constraint is getting overridden by this second constraint. But we can easily modify this behavior by changing this influence factor. If we bring it down to 0, the camera will go back to the clock like before. Since this influence factor is set to 0, this first constraint is now taking full effect. We can animate this by changing this value and adding suitable keyframes. Let us go to frame number 30. We'll change this value to 1 and keyframe this. Then, say we go to frame 60. Let us make it 0 and we'll add a keyframe. So the camera now looks at the clock. We'll then go to frame number 90. Let us keep this same value and keyframe it. Then say we go to frame 120. We'll change this back to 1 and the camera will look at the vase. We have to keyframe this as well. Then we'll repeat these keyframes until the end of our animation. So in the timeline window, we'll duplicate these keyframes by using Shift D and then move them along the timeline, maybe somewhere over here. You can add these keyframes as per your own requirement. Let us run it. The camera will now switch between the two objects, and the view will change alternatively. It can be very useful when multiple actions are happening within a single scene, and you want to change the focus at runtime. You can use even more than two such constraints if you have multiple objects, but remember that the last constraint will always have the highest priority. So if you add a third constraint, its influence factor should be zero for this second constraint to take effect. And if you make this one as zero, then the first constraint will get the full priority. Let us darken the area outside our camera view. So this is not just helpful for your camera, you can use this same method even for a light. Let's say you have a spotlight, and there are multiple objects in your scene. You can use this technique to move the spotlight from one object to another, and highlight the objects dynamically. It is particularly more useful when the target objects are in motion. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.